There is no horror comparable to the use of force by police that takes your loved one's life. The pain is forever severed in your memory, perhaps because it could have been prevented. The family of Oscar Grant, a 22-year-old killed by BART police officers in Oakland in 2009, joined state lawmakers in the Capitol to introduce a new use of force bill. Uh, we're here to announce the introduction of AB 392, which is the California Act to Save Lives. AB 392 will authorize officers to use deadly force only when it is necessary to prevent imminent and serious, serious bodily injury or death. AB 392 this year is almost identical to Assemblymember Weber's AB 931 last year, which followed the shooting death of Stephon Clark and failed in part due to fierce opposition from law enforcement across the state. After hearing from Dr. Weber, we're here to meet with Senator Ana Caballero, who just yesterday introduced a possibly competing bill also addressing police use of deadly force, except her bill counts on the support of the police associations, which Dr. Weber's last year didn't. Well, I think that the, the challenges that, that they faced last year was having a dialogue about whether there could be criminal liability and um, as well as um, uh, stripping the, the, the protections that they have when they're doing their duties in, um, in the scope of their duties. It boils down to this. The assembly bill makes it easier to convict officers for shooting outside of self-defense and focuses on increasing accountability. The Senate bill, supported by law enforcement, focuses and funds more training for officers and still allows officers more options as to when they can legally use lethal force. That's what they want to remove. That's what they want to change. They want to say only if the officer is in, under threat or someone else is under threat, is it okay for an officer to kill someone. Yeah. What's the problem with that? Well, I think what you're doing is, is you're creating a situation where officers are trying to respond to situations that are extremely tense. Uh, they're making decisions and split second reactions. You know, we, we have to get beyond the myth of an unarmed person is not dangerous. Mm -hmm. When you look at the circumstances around Stephen Clark, the call came in because somebody was breaking windows in a car. It was not somebody had threatened somebody's life. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. That was vandalism that had occurred. You don't even know if this man was the one who did the vandalism, but do you get shot for breaking a window mm. in a car? You see what I'm saying? Mm. So if the question becomes, is, is, is my life being threatened by the act that took place, the outcome may have been different. And that's what this bill is doing. Is this bill is saying you need to use whatever's available to you to de-escalate the situation taking in the totality of the circumstances. Would that make officers just not chase people? <laughs> you know, my, my initial takeaway, and I worked 10 years in the streets in the city of San Diego, um, my takeaway is, is they just don't want us to do anything. In talking to both sides, you realize that although they are talking, their perspectives are so far apart, it's hard to imagine a common ground.